Well, it's, it's slightly ambivalent because I used to see lots of people who obviously had benefited from Alcoholics Anonymous and that kind of thing. Uh, and obviously it seemed to me that, uh, uh, that I, I would never stop anyone uh, going to Alcoholics Anonymous if it helped them and would encourage some kinds of people to go, even though I think that the heart of Alcoholics uh, Anonymous's doctrine there's a kind of an intellectual inconsistency. On the one hand, it's an illness and it's something you can't deal with on your own. And on the other hand, it's a kind of, you're cured by a kind of inspiration. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't obviously point out to people the contradiction uh, because it's more important, in my view, that they should not drink than that they should be intellectually 100% consistent. <laughs> well, it sort of goes, the question I had also is, is this idea of an addictive personality. And I do, I do know one or two people who are aware of the to alcohol, and they both succeeded in uh, using the AA program. However, one of them is, a, is addicted now to working out. And yes. She knows it. And she says, I've got to stop doing this because it's just another form of addiction. Yes. Did everyone hear that, actually? Yeah. Yes. Seas band. Uh, well, uh, the question is that uh, whether there are such, uh, whether people uh, who give up one addiction really take up something else, and uh, it, it, and become in effect addicted to it. Um, first of all, I, I don't really like the expansion of uh, addiction to the uh, uh, to the uh, repeated uh, to repeated behaviour because I'm addicted to breakfast, you know, on that <laughs> on that basis. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, if it were even if it were the case, it would be a question of which uh, addiction was more uh, damaging to a person and to the, of course, the people around that person. It is certainly true that I've met uh, uh, people who have succeeded in stopping uh, taking alcohol, who go to Alcoholics Anonymous, but they go, um, you know, 15 times a week. Um, but still, it's better than causing chaos around them. Um, I recently came back from a family program at an extraordinarily expensive rehabilitation uh, facility in Tucson, Arizona. And a couple of things struck me. It was, it was mostly focused on young people. First of all, over a third of the patients were British upper class uh, moneyed people who claimed that they were not understood in the United Kingdom, but this industry existed in the United States that catered to their need because they had dual, di dual disorders stemming from uh, anxiety and depression. The second thing was that the other people, the Americans in the, involved in the program, the young Americans involved in the program, were, to, to, to go back to uh, Tom's wonderful phrase, masters and mistresses of the universe. These were not the poor and the disenfranchised. These were rich, successful, young lawyers, young bankers, um, people who I would reckon that a lot of people in this room would know. Um, and, and I guess, my question goes back to what jo Joe was saying, is obviously this is an opiate, and we're talking more about cocaine than, than et cetera. And, and I'm wondering, you know, you can't explain this away in terms of lack of hope, because these people had everything to hope for mm -hmm. and to inherit, and are, are engaged in this struggle. And I'm wondering how much that the, the industry that has grown up around them is encouraging them to continue in this and to suggest to them that it's something they doesn't take character, character and fortitude to overcome, but that, they, that the help provided by society through other pharmacological uh, methods, etc. And I just wondered if you could comment on that extremely yeah. complicated question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, the, my first comment would be, of course, that I, uh, I don't think existential problems just go away with money. And um, 
Uh, and if they did, you know, Norway would be paradise. <laughs> so uh, I, I see no contradiction, actually, in uh, very rich people uh, being addicted or taking large quantities of drugs. So that's the first thing. Uh, I th my own view is that the idea that there is a technical solution does reinforce uh, the uh, people in their behavior because what, one of the things that happens is that they say, well, I haven't received the uh, correct treatment yet. If only I received the correct treatment, I would give up. But since I haven't, I've got no choice but to continue. And that has been said to me on innumerable occasions uh, by, uh, by addicts in, in, in prison. I would give up, but I haven't had the help. And then you say, well, what help? is it that you think you need? Um, so uh, again, I think we are here with the, uh, if you like, there's a kind of contradiction. If, if these institutions that you've been help these people to stop, I haven't got really anything against them, provided we don't think that they're helping them through some kind of technical uh, means. But I certainly wouldn't accept that people born to great wealth uh, are incapable of having existential problems. On the contrary, uh, I, ca I can see, uh, I can see uh, problems for every kind of person because these existential problems are with, in effect, everybody. We all have them. At least, I... <laughs> yes. um, Hands up those who don't have any existential problem. <laughs> All right, well, tell me what the meaning of life is then. <laughs> so, doctor, I'll tell you. Um, 